بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا بالله الذي العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله طیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالی درجه الشریف اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الوه و اکرمنی به نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك و انشر علينا خزان و علومك و رحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمدلله we have توفیق to continue our study of fiqh based on introduction to fiqh by Ayatollah Mutahari we said that the late محقق هلی صاحب الشراء the one who was written الشراء شرای الاسلام he has a way of classifying different sections of fiqh which is based on whether an action needs قصد القربة or not if it doesn't need قصد القربة then does it need recitation of سیقة a formula or not and if it needs recitation of formula, is it two parties or one party? So, if it needs ghast al it's ibadat. Yes? Like tahara, salat. Of course, tahara means wuzu and qus, not tahara from najasa. Tahara from najasa doesn't need ghast al But tahara, like wuzu and qus and tayammum, needs ghast al Salat, Sawm, Zakat, Hajj, Jihad, Amr Ma'roof, Nahi Anil Munkar, I'tikaf, these are issues that we discussed. They all need Qasd al Khums, Zakat, all need Qasd al Therefore, we call them Ibadat. Then, those that, they don't need Qasd al Of course, if you have Qasd al it's better, you can have reward. But their validity doesn't depend on Qasd al are divided into those that need formula to be recited or not. Those which don't need called Ahkam. Like Hudud, Qiyas, Qisas, sorry, Hudud, Qisas, Qiyat. Those who need recitation of a formula of Sita, so you have to recite something, are either in need of two parties, we call it Uqud, or one party, we call it Iqa'at. Marriage is Aqad, means two party. Divorce is Iqa, one party. Okay? So, we want, inshallah, to introduce those sections of fiqh which are about Uqud. So it means they don't need Qasd al so they are not Mu'amilat, they are not Ibadat, and they need Siqa to be recited by two parties. The first Aqd is Tijara. Kitabu Tijara. Tijara, or in some books, Say Kitabul Bay'a. Tejara means trade, but here means selling and buying. <coughs> so you need someone to buy, you need someone to sell. Fuqaha have lots of discussions here. <coughs> Shaykh Ansari, Rahmatullah, as you know, has a very important book on fiqh called Al Makasib. And this makasib is studied in three years in Hosea. If you take one lesson every day for one academic year, you finish makasib muharram if you don't waste any time. And then bay, then khiyarat. But it's very difficult to finish all the makasib in three years, so they may not be able to read all of it. Makasib al-Muharram is about those things which are haram 
initially as a way of making profit, but some of them then are actions that may not be even about business. For example, one of the very good discussions about backbiting Reba is in Makasib of Sheikh Ansari. Although no one, you know, takes money for backbiting. <laughs> but the discussion about different types of mu'amilat involves also certain actions like ghaybah. So he talks about ghaybah also, backbiting. So, what are the things that we can sell? What are the things that we cannot sell? What are the conditions that we have to observe? There are many things. When the buyer has a right for cancellation, these are very important topics that they discuss in this kitab. There are also discussions about, for example, sometimes the purchase is in cash. You take something and you give the money right away. Sometimes you buy now means you give money now, you take later. This is called salaf. For example, sometimes farmers, before they harvest, they sell. So they take the money, but they give the product after a few months. Sometimes it's opposite. You give the product, you take the money later. Yes? So either product and money are given at the same time. This is naked. <coughs> Sometimes, no. You sell, money comes later, it's in Nessia. Sometimes product is not given, money is given, this is Salaf. Means you buy in advance. Ayatollah Mutari says, but if both money and product come later and we just <laughs> sell it now, it's void. You cannot consider any transaction unless either the payment is made or the product is given. If none of them is done, what type of muamala is this? For example, you say, two years later, you give me something and I pay you that. He says this is void according to Fuqaha. Of course, everyone should check their marja if it's relevant to you. Another thing is that sometimes a person has made a transaction, for example, you have purchased the house, but by taking something more or less or the same, you hand over to another person. You say, I don't want this house anymore. And before it comes to your control, you want to hand it over to someone else. So this is also discussed. Murabaha is when you take something more and muwadha'a is when you take something less and tawliya is you, when you just hand over. So it's one of the major books of fiqh because it deals with many types of businesses that people The next is kitab rahm Sometimes I owe you something, but I don't have money to give, for example. Or I'm supposed to give you money after some time. You ask me for something that you keep as a kind of guarantee with yourself. Okay, for example, I have some gold. I am not giving you this gold for yourself, but I give it as a kind of guarantee that you can have peace of mind that I will bring my, uh, I will give you money and take this from this. This is called Kitab al Then there are many issues here to discuss. For example, the person who has been given this as Rahm cannot use it without permission of that person or cannot sell it, for example. You know, there are lots of discussions here. 
Another section is Kitabul Mufallas. In Arabic, we say Muflis and Mufallas. Muflis means someone who is bankrupt, technically. Mufallas means is recognized as bankrupt. So this is Mufallas. It means the one who is recognized as bankrupt. If someone has lots of debt and <coughs> hakim shara means a faqih who is exercising <coughs> velaya, yeah, because you know we have issues in fiqh that everyone says it's up to mujtahid to t settle. For example, if there is orphan and has no one to look after him, who has to take care of it? Faqih, jurist, Hakim Shah. Or if there are monies, properties, they have no owner, who should take care of it? Faqih. Okay? These are very uh, basic and minimal. Uh, you know, powers of faqih that every faqih accepts. It's not about the idea of vilayat faqih into political. This much everyone has to accept. So, if someone is not able to give back the debts that he has, Faqih Hakim Shar may announce this person as Mufallas and therefore this person has no right to sell the remaining of what he has. They will try to use this to pay back to the people that he owes them. Because otherwise he may just sell this and run away or maybe you know he doesn't do it because now interest of those people has have to be considered. Another thing is Kitabul Hajr. Hajr means man, prohibition, to stop. There are people that technically they are owner, but in fact, they are not given right to exercise their ownership. There is a limit, restriction put on their ownership. One was the Mufallas, the one who is bankrupt. If there is a child who is not yet mature enough to decide for his property and there is no guardian. The child cannot sell or buy anything because people may deceive the child and interest of the child can be compromised. Or if there is a mad person, if there is someone who is not understanding properly, he has some money from his father, you know, someone has to look after the money on behalf of this person. This is the role of the faqih. Or if there is a person who is ill and is going to die in the same illness that leads to death, he cannot do vasiya more than one third. Or even some people say cannot sell or buy in that time because he's going to die very soon and maybe he's not in a good condition maybe he's under pressure so there is a freeze you know put on the transactions of this person the next <coughs> section is Adhaman Adhaman in Farsi we say Zamanat Zaman means what? means Someone is, for example, borrowing money from someone else and says, Sheikh, he doesn't know me or doesn't 
trust me, says, you must become my zamen, like guarantor. According to Shia fiqh, if I accept to be zamen, it's not just guarantor. It means that now I have to give this person and later take from him. So now he is basically in touch with me. Whether that person gives or not, I have to give and then later take from that person. This is majority view or maybe all, anyway, for all these things you just check your margin because we are not talking about fatwa of maraja, we are talking about fiqh, there can be differences, but a major difference between Sunni and Shia in Kitab al-Zaman, Ayatollah Mutahari says, is this, that according to Shia, the person who would be responsible would be Zamin. And then he has to take from that person. This gives peace of mind to market, to people, that if I am Zamin, means I am responsible. I take it as my personal debt and I have to clear this. Don't worry. Whether that person gives or not, I will give it. Then we have Kitab sulh This soul is different from peace in contrast to war. That is discussed in Kitab jihad This soul means a kind of mid- kind of way, solution for financial <coughs> conflicts, a kind of reconciliation. So two people have a case. This says, you know, this person owes me this much. That person denies altogether or it says much less than that. There is no evidence, there is no proof, and they are in conflict. So sometimes we try to find a way that we can satisfy partially both parties. Of course, it's a very difficult thing and you don't have right to pressurize them, but if they want themselves, that's another issue. So this is called sol, ketab sol. Sometimes this also happens when someone uh, has debt to Marja, doesn't know, for example, how much homes he has to give, doesn't know the number, it's mixed. Again, they can do solh. So, with the wak wakil or the Marja himself, they may do solh. Kitab al Sharka. Sharka or Sharika means shared. Ownership, share. For example, sometimes someone dies and family inherits one house, one property. Now it is sherke. It used to be belong to one person, but now they share. Sometimes share can happen without your will, like this case. Sometimes two people together buy something or together start a business. <clears throat> Sometimes, for example, I have taken my harvest to meal. Huh? Another person also, then our wheat or, you know, barleys are mixed. We have become now <laughs> sharik without wanting that. So <laughs> there are different types of shared Ownership that are discussed by Fuqaha under this section of Fiqh. Kitab al Nowadays, this has become very important in Islamic banking. Kitab al What is Mudaraba? Mudaraba means that someone gives the capital, someone works. For example, I have some experience, some 
contact, some skills about trade, and you have money. We agree that we work together, you give the capital, I work, and then whatever profit we make, we divide, like 50%, for example, I don't know, one third, two third. But what is important, if there is any loss, it should be paid by the person who has capital. Not the person who has worked, because he has already worked and has not made any money. Ayatollah Mutari says this is different from capitalist system, because capitalist says the one who has capital never loses, only labor loses. Yeah? But here, the one who has capital has to take risk. This person has taken risk, has worked one year, has not made any money. So you have to pay the loss. Plus, they cannot fix the amount. They can agree on percentage, but cannot say every month I give you this much back. Unfortunately, some people take money, say, okay, I take you know, 10,000 pounds, every month I give you uh, this much money. They don't call it, you know, interest. They call it, this is profit I am giving you. But mudaraba is fixed according to percentage, but you don't know it's going to bring anything. So what you have to do, you can pay something on the account, but later you have to calculate how much money is produced, if any, and then divide it according to the percentage that was agreed. So you cannot say, I give you this amount anyway. Then we have Kitabul Mudara'ah Wal Musaqat Very similar to Mudaraba, but Mudaraba is normally for trade and this type of work Muzara'a is for agriculture Musaqat is for gardening For example I have land, water, someone says, I want to grow something here in your land. We make a deal that 50-50 or I don't know, 30-70, we make a deal. He works on my land and then we share the profit. Mozara is I have garden. Someone says, I come and give water to your trees look after the garden, pick up the fruits, and when we sell it, we divide the profit. Kitabul Wadi'ah Wadi'ah means to put something as amana, as trust. The one who accepts Wadiya, Amana, has certain responsibilities, cannot be careless. But if he does, he is reasonable responsibility. If God forbid this is lost or damaged, he has no responsibility to pay. Okay? You are traveling. You put, for example, your car in my garage or in my, I don't know, car, house. <coughs> and then a thief comes. I was not responding. It's not that, you know, I left it open or, you know, I was careless. No, it happens. I'm not responsible because I am Amin. You have trusted me and I have to just look after it, but I'm not responsible for it. If I have not done anything, uh, you know, negligence, you say, you know, efrat or tafrit, you know, yes. If they disagree, they go to judge. But from a point of view, if there is no carelessness, it's... Kitab al Ariya. Aria means to borrow, 
is different. Wadi'a, I come and tell you, please look after my car, look after my money. I want to go for a journey. Aria is, you tell me, can you give me your car for two days? Okay. Could you give me your laptop? Could you give me your wedding dress? Yes. So this is Aria. Means you borrow. What is the difference between Aria and Wadia in, in addition to the, you know, who is requesting? In Aria, normally people use it also. Yeah? I leave my car in your home, but I may not give you permission to use it. If you want to use it, you have to ask for permission. But Aria, I say, you know, please give me your car for two days because I want to use it. So if you agree, means you agree to, that I use it. Then Kitabul Ejara. Ejara means to hire, to rent. It can be one of the two. Sometimes there is something that we rent. For example, I rent my house. Okay? Or car. I have some equipments. So, I am mujer, means I am giving this to someone as rent, and the one who takes it is mustajer. But sometimes, maybe I am employed to work. I am ajir in the sense that I am employed. I am paid for my work. It's not a, a kind of object. It's a person that is selling his work. He's not selling himself, he's selling his work, few hours of his time. What is the difference between bay and ejara? It's very obvious. Bay, for example, we sell the house. But in ejara, we don't sell the house. In ejara, what we do? We sell the benefit of the house. Yeah? Therefore, Fuqaha say that ejara is to keep the property but sell the manfa. Yes? If I have a home and I rent it to you, I cannot then go and live there. I cannot take my guests there because I have rented to you. Unless in the contract it was mentioned that this much right I don't give to you. I keep it for myself. I want to keep this room for myself. And, but if I have given to someone something as rent, means I no longer own the benefit I have given to someone else. This is different from Arya. If I give something as Arya, if I lend you something, still I can use it. For example, I give you my laptop for a week but now I may need my laptop and you see your laptop is here you can start working with it but your home you cannot say because he's away you can go and again live in that home Chetabul Vekala this is very common and that is when you authorize someone to act as your agent, as your vakil. For example, for nikah, yeah? They give vakala to someone to act on behalf of groom or bride. This is called kitabul vakal. I want to sell something, I want to buy something. I can give vakala to someone to do it for me. Chetabul Vaqf was Sadaka or Vukuf was Sadaka. You know, Vaqf is very important in our tradition. It's one of the Sadaqat Jariyah that you own, for example, a garden, a building, 
a farm, a, you do it vaqf, endowment. And this is permanent. It can be arm, it can be khas. For example, you can say, I make it vaqf for everyone to use. Or you can say, I make this uh, dormitory for Jose students, for example. I make this vaqf, this hole for people who want to get married. You can also make it a specific for certain people or certain purpose. It can be general. And also sadaqah. They discuss about sadaqah here. Kitabu sukna wal haps. What is the difference between sukna wal haps and waqf? Waqf is permanent. When I do waqf, it's no longer my money. Yes? I am still alive, but this is made wrath, now it is for public or whatever has been specified in wrath. But sukna is that I have something and for a fixed period of time I say this can be used for example by masjid, this can be used by madrasa for a few years and after that I can take it back. If it is a house, it is called sukna. If it is a pro money, something like that, it is called haps. But it is temporary. Kitabul hebat. Heba means to gift, to give as a gift. You know, it's very good to give some gifts. Gifting. As such, is not something which is not revocable. If I give you a gift, then I can take it back, except in two cases. If it is muabbaza, hebaton muabbaza. For example, I gifted you something. In return, you gifted me something else. This is Hebeya Mu'avvadze. Okay? I didn't want to sell it to you. I said that this is a gift for you, and you say this is a gift for you. Now I cannot claim back my gift. Or if you have gifted to relatives, even if it was without return, you cannot claim it back. If you have given something to your brother, sister, father, mother, uncle, you cannot after some time say, I changed my mind and give it back. But if you have given to a stranger something, a friend, and you have not taken any gift in return, and it is still there, you can take it back if you change your mind. Okay? But if that person has used it or it's damaged and finished, you cannot say you have to pay it the money for it. So I have given a car to someone to use. Then I see he may, you know, kill some people. He's not careful in driving. If he's a stranger, in my, or in, I mean not relative, I can say give back my car. But if he has sold the car and or had you know already accident and is written off, I cannot say give me back my car. Kitabu Sabri wa Remaya. You know Islamically gambling is not permitted and betting is most of the time not permitted because it becomes like a gambling. But there are exceptions, and this is for the importance of defense. One is 
betting on the horse race and one is for shooting arrows of course it can be extended today maybe to other forms of uh, defense methods <coughs> so sab means competition in race like horse race and ramaya means ram means to throw to shoot arrow so it's possible to bet on this kitabul wasiya wasiya is will before you die you can make your wasiya it's very important to have wasiya and in your wasiya you can decide up to one third of your money not all of it you cannot say when i die my children and wife or husband should not take anything and everything should be given to this or that if you want to do something like that <coughs> when you are alive you have control but when you die you should not do that the only thing is one third of your money you can do that so when someone dies first they clear that if he has debts has to be cleared then one third is possible okay, one third i want to give for this charity i want to i don't know give to this particular person not more than that wasiya can be tamlikiya ahdiya fakkiya tamlikiya means that something from you will be given to someone else to own can be ahdiya for example say do few years prayer for me do some hajj for me some ziyara for me fakkiya means if someone in the past had slaves could say i want to free my slaves and finally kitabun nikah the last aqd here we discuss is kitabun nikah which is about marriage as you know they talk about significance of nikah here they talk about different types of nikah uh, conditions of nikah rulings of nikah uh, rights of <coughs> husband and wife mutual rights that they have and normally also they discuss about the rulings about glance looking at strangers also in this section and how to recite formula all are discussed in kitabun nikah so alhamdulillah we finished uh, the section about ughud inshallah we have to carry on with iqa'at and ahkam in the next session alhamdulillah rabbil alamin